Hi everyone, it's Caitlin from Millie Big Plant. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. So we are doing an unboxing of some plants that I ordered from Plant Arena, hooray! And before I get too far into this video, I just want to apologize for the glare onto my glasses. I got a new ring light so that I can film videos at night or in the evening, which I have never been able to do. And I think it's gonna mean more videos for you guys if you're okay with a little bit of a glare on my face. So um, I could try contacts too, but I kind of like my glasses look. So we're gonna just see how this goes. I could also do soft box lights, but I don't really have enough room in my apartment to set up a whole big lighting system. So anyway, thanks for bearing with me. I'm so excited I got this package from Plantarina. Um, I ordered more plants from Plantarina than I ever have at once before, which is super exciting. She had a 40% off sale recently, and a lot of the plants that I ordered ended up being a better price than they would be even with my employee discount at the store that I work at. And these plants are from Plantarina, and to be honest, I've never had a bad Plantarina unboxing experience, so... I'm really excited to open this up. I love ordering plants from Plant Arena. I feel like they're always perfect. She is, in my opinion, the gold standard of plant shipments. Whenever I order plant presents, I order them from Plant Arena because I've just never once had a bad experience with ordering something from her and the plants are always just like exceptional quality. They're usually like better than you think you're gonna get and they're always so healthy and in perfect condition. So anyway, I'm hyping this up before I've gotten into this package. I really hope that these plants are really nice. Let's open it up. There's some plants in here that actually like one of them I ordered because I want to recommend it as a plant to you guys. The rest of them are ones that I got because I just really wanted them. <laughs> This is fancy. I've never seen this before. Look at it. it, it. This is like, <laughs> this reminds me of when you're trying to wrap a present and you accidentally cut the piece of paper like a little bit too small. And so you have to cut like a tiny little extra piece of wrapping paper and tape it over the hole. Is that what this is? <laughs> it's cute. The combination of this the light that I'm using and this reflective, <laughs> I'm completely blinded. Can't see anything. Okay, wow. I literally have to let my eyes adjust back so I can see into this dark box. Okay. Do you know that's why pirates wear an eye patch? Not because they have an eye out, but because it's so, would <laughs> you, should I not talk about this? I wouldn't know how curious now. Wait, did you not know? No, I'm like, what? Oh, the pirate eye patch trick. It's not, um, it's not because you're missing an eye. It's so that one eye is already acclimated to the dark. So that if you're suddenly in a condition where you have to fight in the dark, you've got the leg up because you've got one eye that's ready to work. That's what I need, an eye patch to film in front of a ring light so I can flip it back and forth and see what I'm doing. All right, which one should I do first? Hmm, because I can see them all now. Let's do them. Okay, this one, let's do this one first. I was gonna say I'm most excited for this one, but actually I'm, I'm really excited for these plants. I'm excited for all of them. So, ficus. So this is a ficus benjamina El Dorado, and it is a cultivar of the ficus benjamina, and it's got these variegated mottled leaves, and it's really cute. I've been eyeing this for a little while, and been anxiously waiting for this package to arrive in the mail. It's super cute, and I think that this is a really cute plant, and I feel like more people need to get this because look how cute this is. I feel like ficus benjamina as a plant in general is pretty like underrated. I think a lot of people feel underwhelmed by it as a plant because they're pretty common. Um, I know like I grew up with one in my house, a big ficus benjamina tree, and one of my like plant memories is like picking up the leaves that would fall from that tree every year in the winter. Anyway, ficus benjamina, I really like them and I think this one is a really, really beautiful variety. 
And it's in perfect condition. I mean, look at this plant, it's perfect. Plantarina usually sends the plants with um, some sort of, I don't even know what you call this. It's like, it seems like some sort of recyclable, compostable probably fiber on top of here. Sometimes when you order a plant and it comes with this stuff over the substrate, they pack it in in a way that looks really nice um, and people want to leave it on there. And I guess if you want to do that, that's okay too. But generally, you probably want to take this stuff off and at least like look in the soil and just make sure that everything's okay when you first get it. Because sometimes plants do lose a lot of soil in the transportation process and you might not realize it if you leave this layer on the top. And sometimes I've received plants in the mail and I take this top part off and there's just like tons of exposed roots right underneath. So I think in general, you do usually want to just, you know, check under here at least if you're not going to take this off, but I would recommend removing it. Okay, let's keep going. These are packed really nicely in here. You know, sometimes when you order multiple plants, they can be kind of in a jumble and I usually recommend that if you're worried about plants getting damaged in shipping, ordering fewer plants so that there's more packing material and less plants all jammed in together. Um, so I wasn't sure how this was going to turn out because there are five plants in here, but they're all very nicely separated in this well padded box that is definitely large enough to accommodate all of them. So that's great. Uh oh, shoot. should have just bought this in person from the store I work at. It's not Plantarina's fault. It's this plant for sure. It's gonna grow back. I don't know what to say. Keep your fingers crossed for this plant. It's gonna grow back. This totally happens. This is a variegated ficus triangularis, by the way. There was a really large one in the plant shop that I was working in and we had it marked down 50% off because it had dropped most of its leaves. And this plant is significantly smaller than the one in the shop. And I had been considering buying it and the customer who came in and bought it ended up also seeing the potential of a ficus triangularis with a ton of sad leaves. So I don't wanna speak too soon, but I'm hoping that this will be able to recover and it was a really good price on Plant Arena. It was, it was cheaper than I would have been able to get it for at the store that I work in with my discount. And now I'm not sure if this was a good decision because the one that in, in the shop was like much larger and would, you know, recover into a much bigger plant. But I figured that this being from Plant Arena, it's gonna be a healthy plant to begin with. Not that the ones in the shop I work at wouldn't be a healthy plant, but just while I was ordering plants from Plantarina, I figured I would give it a go. Um, I used to have a variegated ficus triangularis. I actually had one before I ever had my big tree. Um, and when I moved, it died. It was the first casualty of my move. Um, I brought it up into this new apartment and it was like the first couple of days. It just lost all its leaves immediately. What? It was overnight. Yeah, it was, it was overnight. It was literally overnight. I brought it here. I moved its location and it just completely died. And it was just one tiny little twig. It wasn't even like a tree form. It was just like a single twig with like a couple leaves on it. And it just croaked. 
um, and there wasn't really a good way to recover it. It didn't even really have much of a root system. So that was sad. And I've been kind of avoiding buying another one of these because it was kind of traumatic. Um, but this one was a good price and I'm willing to give it a go. And it looks like there are growth points on the ends of these branches here. Some of the leaves are still on the plant, so that's a good thing. I mean, I guess I knew that this was gonna be in kind of rough shape. I was hoping that it was gonna maybe be a little bit bigger. I, I really, I thought maybe this was gonna be a bigger plant. It's kind of a small plant to begin with. So I don't know. I, If I could have a do-over, I probably wouldn't order this again. You know the plant store I work in is probably about to stock some more of these, right? So we'll see, I might come home with another one. <laughs> so we're gonna save my, my plant recommendation for last. I also just noticed that there's a heat pack in this box and I did not ask for one. So that's really nice. I wonder if it was for the triangularis. I bet it was for the triangularis. So that is really a, a nice thing. It was next to the triangularis actually. Wow, that's really thoughtful. Plantarina's great. They knew that this plant was gonna be problematic and put a heat pack directly next to the root ball. So we like that. Okay. And then these two are related. Oh shoot, I should not have worn these white pants. Getting dirt all over them. Hooray! Look how cute this is. <gasps> Look how cute this is! Plantarina calls this a Sansevieria tornado. It is a variety of um, Sansevieria trifasciata, like one of the bird's nest varieties. Um, but I saw someone's picture of this. It's like a really overgrown, really mature one in this kind of really crazy form and is twisted in all these different directions and was just looking so cool as a really mature plant. So I'm really excited for this one because it's like a little bit, you know, kind of looks like a squashed up bird's nest Sansevieria right now. But I think as it continues to grow and maintains this twisty form, they look really cool as they get bigger and as they get a little bit taller. So I'm very excited for this. Um, I think this is also called Sansevieria Twisted Sister. I like it. Okay. Yay, that's so exciting. Oh, and these sticks are just in here for, um, for support in the box. Right. You excited? My husband's watching from the couch like... <laughs> I imitate my husband and it's so exaggerated always. <laughs> it's so funny. I crack myself up. Yay, look how cute this is. Okay, this has been my like number one wish list Sansevieria for a while. I don't know why I like this so much. This is a Sansevieria Lilliput and it's just like just small and cute. It's a dwarf form and it's got these kind of like gracefully curving little leaves and there's something about it that I just really like so much. It's really cute. It's kind of a paler coloration. Um, the green is kind of a light green and yeah I just really like the way that this looks and I've noticed that um, as this one gets more mature and grows in the traditional Sansevieria way where it starts to form little clumps and grows by its spreading rhizome. Um, as it starts to fill the pot, I feel like it almost looks like a little pot of grass. Like there's something about the form of this that looks very soft to me, even though it's still a very hard snake plant. And I really like it for that reason. Oh, it's so cute. I really like it. The last one. By the way, I've just been assuming that everyone who's watching this has heard of Plantarina. If you haven't, obviously check her out. Plantarina is the queen of plants. And then this last one is one that I got because I want to make a recommendation to people to get this plant. So. Okay, so this is an austral gem fern, and it's a type of bird's nest fern, actually. The leaf shape on this plant with these compound leaflets 
looks a lot like a sword fern, kind of like a, like a Boston fern or a Kimberly Queen fern, but this is actually a type of bird's nest fern, a type of asplenium. And the thing about this that is so cool is that they are really, really easy to care for. They're really tough plants, as in very vigorous growers that don't need a lot. They don't need high humidity and they can handle kind of lower light conditions and they can dry out between waterings, but they have this classic fern look. And the reason I wanted to recommend this plant is in multiple plant shops that I've worked in, we had carried these austral gem ferns and they last. They last and last and last. You know, usually when we get ferns into the shop, if no one buys them after a few weeks, we have to kind of move them into a discount section or end up just getting rid of them because the ferns after a while, um, they just need a lot of attention and then they sometimes can be sensitive to overwatering and it's just sometimes hard to nail the care of ferns just right when it's like a whole bunch of people's shared responsibility to care for them. These, the austral gem ferns are so forgiving. They don't care what you do to them and they just continue to look great and they kind of get droopy when they need water. Um, the leaves are really thick so you can't tell visually just by looking at it but when you feel the plant, um, the the leaf thickness is not like a normal fern. It, it feels like the leaf thickness on like a bird's nest fern, like a Chrissy fern, where the leaves are kind of like glossy feeling and you can feel that they have this like rubbery sort of texture. This has that texture. So I think that these are really fantastic little ferns to add to your collection. If you were trying to care for ferns but don't have high enough humidity, Austral Gem Fern might be the one for you. Um, they're just really great. And I've also noticed that they have lots of different growth forms like the leaves are not very consistent in the way they look like sometimes they look like this kind of like parsley sometimes they look like this sometimes they grow looking a little bit more like a maiden hair fern um and i'm actually not completely sure what the final form of this leaf is when it's a, a very mature variety because i've only seen these as little four and six inch plants and on all the plants I've seen, they've always had this really wide variation in the morphological characteristics of the individual little leaflets. So I think that is a really fun thing too. Um, so yeah, um, this plant in particular, this specimen is a little bit lopsided, like it got a little bit, like some of these are a little bit broken, but it does form a round bird's nest, like traditional shape. Like if it was filled out a little bit more here, you can kind of imagine what it would look like. So yeah. This Austral Gem Fern is one that I highly, highly recommend, and I'm really glad to be adding this into my collection because I know that it's gonna last. I mean, I don't wanna jinx it, but this one, I think you can kind of treat it more like a philodendron than like a fern. So I think that is really cool about this. So yeah, this is really cute, and I'm very excited about this. And I think this was an awesome haul. Can't believe I just got these five new plants. Uh, <laughs> keep your fingers crossed for this little ficus, but I'm, I'm hoping that it's gonna be able to to make it. I'm just going to put it right by my other ficus triangularis and hope that that's good enough for this little plant. If it ends up dropping all of the rest of these leaves, that's okay too. That's kind of a thing that these ficus do. Um, and even if it does end up dropping all of the leaves, I see that there's new green stems growing on here and there's little growths. So I'm just really going to keep my fingers crossed for this one. Send good thoughts to this little triangularis. <laughs> All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed watching this unboxing video. I would love to hear from you on which of these plants you liked or what you've unboxed recently or ordered from Plant Arena or from another website online. If you'd like to recommend a shop to me, I would love to hear it. And yeah, I hope that this inspired you to maybe be able to get a fern for people who've been saying that they can't get ferns. Um, this one might be the one. Give this one a chance because I really think that this could work for you. So yeah, let me know if you end up buying an Austral Gem Fern and keep me updated on your journey with it because I would love to hear whether or not I'm correct in thinking that this one is a very easy one to care for. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope that you are having a fantastic week and I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye. Do you guys remember when Plant Arena first moved into that rental cottage in Florida and she planted all those PPPs in the backyard of that rental home? <laughs> she is a legend! I'm wearing this bracelet from the orchid show I went to today. I went to an orchid show, it was my first orchid show. Super exciting. I did take some clips of that, so I'm gonna be making a video about that too, so stay tuned. Oh, I got a super amazing rare aeroid at the orchid show that I was not expecting to find there. I 
didn't know that Equigenera was gonna be there. Okay, anyway, bye. <laughs>